Hello dear learners, welcome to the massive open online course in Swayam in Psychology. I am Dr. Shalini Prasad from DPS Basan Kunj, New Delhi. Today we will start a chapter, what is psychology? The objective is of this module would be understanding what is psychology and psychology as a discipline, psychology as a natural science, psychology as a social science, understanding mind and behavior and popular notions about the topic that is what is psychology and its discipline. Let us take an introduction. So, if I ask you all my dear students why students opt for psychology over other subjects? Generally responses to these questions are truly bewildering but mostly the students give response such as they want to know what is others thinking about them. But then one also comes across the responses as knowing oneself, knowing others, of knowing more about the specific responses, knowing why people dream, etc, etc, why people go out of the way to sometimes help on the roads, others, why beat others more, so many of them. So, the most common question arises as why people are generally unhappy, what changes should they bring about in themselves if they desire happiness for themselves in their lives. Now we will understand some of these questions. So what changes is going to be there or they should bring about in themselves if there is a desire for happiness in their lives. So all this could be answered by understanding psychology as a science, psychology as a discipline. Psychology is basically the study of human mind and also the human behavior which in turn works as a phenomena of stimulus and response. So every behavior has a response attached to it. Let us take a deep insight over the concept of psychology while understanding its various fields and its disciplines, its branches along with its evolution. Now let us talk about what is psychology. Definition? Yes, we would like to know that. So psychology is defined formally as a science, it studies mental processes, experiences and behavior in different contexts. Studies mental processes, experiences and behavior. Now this study of human mind and behavior, it means a science or a study of the subject. Now let us talk about the concept of behavior. What exactly is the behavior? what exactly is experience and its mental processes. So when we talk about nature of experiences, it can only be understood by analyzing the complex set of internal and external conditions. What is behavior? Behavior is the response of reactions that are made of activities in which people are engaged in. They are overt they are covert. Behaviors which are associated with some stimulus in the environment of changes that happen internally. Let us talk about mental process. We use our mental process when we think, try to solve a problem, to know, to remember something. So one level at which these mental processes are reflected is the brain activity. So as we think or solve mathematical problem, our brain activities can be observed using the different techniques of brain imaging. You must have come across with this. However, we cannot say that brain activities are mental processes are the same although they are interdependent. So mental activities and neural activities, they are initially overlapping processes but they are not identical. Unlike the brain, the mind does not have the physical structure of the and it does not have a location. So where does mind? So mind, it emerges and evolves in our interactions and experiences in the world that get diametrically organized in the form of the system which is responsible for the occurrence of the behaviors or the various mental processes. Brain activities, it provides important clues 
to how our mind functions, but the consciousness of our own experience and the mental processes are much more than the neural or the brain activity. So, even when the conscious or when we are asleep, some mental activities go on. Let us talk about some experiences. Now, what exactly is an experience? You must be experiencing every day. Now, experience is something which is very, very subjective in nature. We cannot directly observe them or to know someone. How do we know that somebody is experiencing? Only the experiencing person can be aware of the conscious of his or her experiences. So, thus experience is something embedded in our awareness or consciousness. Psychologists have focused on experiences of pain with or being undergoing which is very, very terminally ill patients or of the psychological pain felt in the bereavement, somebody losing somebody. Besides the experiences which lead to the positive feelings such as romantic, being romantic, the kind of elation you get in that, similar kinds of feelings. So, experiences are influenced by internal and external conditions of the experiencer. So, if you are actually traveling in a crowded bus, which is very, very hot and a dry, hot summer day, you may not experience the usual discomfort if you are going for a, yes, you are right, with your friends and for a picnic, which definitely with your close friends and then you do not feel that pain and agony. Let us talk about the behavior now. Behavior, these are the responses or the reacting or the reactions we make to activities we engage in. So, when something is being hurried at you or something when is hurried on you or your eyes blink in a simple, it is a simple reflex action. So, you are taking an examination and can feel the heart pounding which you must have come across so many times dear children. You decide to go for a particular movie with your friends behaviors may be very, very simple. It could be very complex. It could be very short. It could be very enduring. Some behaviors are overt. They can be outwardly seen or sensed by an observer. Some are very, very internal and covert. So, when you are in a different or difficult situations while playing a game of a chess, you are right, it is a difficult game because I do not know how to play it. So, when you are playing a game of chess, you almost feel your hand muscles twitching, trying or trying hard to or experiment with it, definitely make the moves, all behaviors covert and overt, they are all associated with the triggered by some stimulation in the environment or changes that happens internally. For examples, behaviors our responses or reactions we make or activities we engage in. Examples of overt behavior would be blinking of an eye, when it is something or when it is hurdle as a person, withdrawing the hand immediately after the touching the hot pan. Examples of covert behavior, let us talk it out. Twitching of the hand muscles while playing the game of a chess pounding the heart during the interview, you must have come across sometimes in your life. Let us talk about the relationship between the mind and behavior now. For many decades, the mind remained a taboo in psychology because it could not be defined in concrete behaviors or terms and where it is located, definitely it was a query. And indeed, so if this term mind has returned to psychology, we should thank our neuroscientists like Sperry and the physicists like Penrose who have given us so much of respect which it deserved it now. There is a scientist or there are scientists in various disciplines including psychology who think that unified theory of the mind is possibly although it is still so far away. Now, what exactly is mind? The elements of the person? that enables him to be aware of the world and his own experiences, to think, to feel, actually the faculty of consciousness and thoughts, the levels of mind, 
the conscious mind includes everything that we are aware of so that is the aspect of our mental processing that we can think talk rationally the preconscious mind is the part of the mind that represents ordinary memories while we are not consciously aware of this information at a given time we can retrieve it we can actually take it out and put it into consciousness whenever it's required recent studies in the neurosciences have established relationship between right mind and behavior using how positive visualization techniques and feelings positive emotions so recent studies in affective neuroscience have already shown that there are relationship between mind and behavior so it has been shown that using positive visualization technique yes you're right positive visualization techniques and feeling positive emotions one can bring about significant changes in the bodily process dear children have you heard the name of ornish please go and search something great studies related to ornish ornish has shown that it is a number of studies with his patients in his studies what he found was a person with the blocked arteries yes i'm right with the blocked arteries was made to visualize that the blood that was flowing through his blocked arteries after practicing this creative visualization over a period of time it was found a very very significant relief and it was found and obtained and established by these patients that as a degree of the blockage definitely became significantly very less so use of mental imagery that is images generated by the person in his or her mind have been used to cure various various kinds of phobias phobias you must be wondering you must have heard the term yes you are right it's the irrational fears of the objects and the situations there's a new discipline that is coming what we call it as psycho neuro immunology it has emerged which is emphasizing the role played by the mind in strengthening the immune system now let's talk about psychology as a discipline so when we observe others as lay or common people our own point of view or a ways of understanding the world that is influencing our interpretation of the behaviors and experience psychologists they try to minimize such biases in their experiments of the behaviors or the experiences in various ways some do so how by seeking to make their analysis more scientific and objective others seek to explain behaviors from the point of view of the person who is experiencing that why because they think that subjectivity is definitely very very necessary as it is an important aspect of human experience in the indian tradition self reflection and analysis of the conscious experience is held to be the major source of our actually understanding the psychological understanding so many western psychologists they have also been emphasizing this role of self reflection and self knowledge in understanding the human behavior and their experience so regardless of the differences in the way how do we see psychologists go about to study the behavior mental processes and experiences they seek to understand explain actually them in a very very systematical and very very verifiable manner so we'll be doing in de- great detail what is verification and verifiable manner there's a difference in the approaches or in approaching the common field for the advice that is given by or them by the psychologists psychologists is definitely preferred why because you're right you're able to recapitulate it very nicely here they reduce the biases in explanation of these behaviors it involves scientific analysis they are trained professionals explain behavior 
mental processes and experiences in a very systematical and a verifiable manner. Psychologist though it is or psychology we would say though it is a very very old science knowledge of discipline it is a very very young science. If one definitely were to like the year of the founders of the first laboratory trace back search please go look for it. Yes we were there in 1879 in Leipzig. However what kind of science was psychology till or still the remains a matter of definitely a debate particularly because what the new interfaces of it is that having emerged in the recent times. Psychology is generally categorized as social science also but it should not come to you as a surprise that not only in other countries but also in India it is also the subject of study offered in the faculty of science both at the undergraduate level as well as the postgraduate levels. Now in fact two of the most sought after emerging disciplines which is continuously borrowed from psychology is neuroscience and computer science. So some of you would definitely would be asking and aware of it also as well that in developing the brain imaging techniques like MRIs, EEGs which is making it possible to study brain processes in real time. That is so when they are actually taking place similarly in IT areas both human computer interaction they are talking it about artificial intelligence cannot be possibly grow without the psychological knowledge in the cognitive processes. Thus psychology as a discipline today has two parallel streams one which makes use of the methods in the physical and the biological sciences and the other which makes use of the methods of social and the cultural sciences in the study of various psychological and the social phenomena. These streams sometimes converge only to drift apart and to go like the separate two ways. In the first case psychology considers itself as a discipline which focuses largely on the biological principles to explain the human behavior. It sometimes or it assumes that all behavior phenomena have causes which can be or which is can be discovered if we can collect the data systematically under the control conditions. So here the aim of the researcher is to know what is the cause, what is its effect, its relationship so that a prediction of the behavior phenomena can be made and behavior can be controlled if needed to be. So on the other hand psychology is also social science focusing only how the behavior phenomena can be explained in terms of the interaction that takes place between the person and the socio-cultural context of which definitely he or she is the part. So each behavior is a phenomena assumed to have a multiple causes. Let us summarize first psychological laboratory where it was open yes in the Leipzig in 1879 psychology is considered both as a science and a social science. Psychology is a science why because it is the physical and the biological process it considers science and the social science. Social science why because it is embedded in the cultural and the social context in which the individuals are definitely fabricated. Psychology as a natural science and as a social science they merge together and they also drift apart. Why? Because they run parallel to each other. Psychology is also vastly borrowing from each other like neurosciences and computer sciences. Now let us talk about psychology as a natural science. Modern psychology they has developed because of the application of these scientific methods to study the psychological phenomena. Science it places a great deal of emphasis on very important objectivity which can be obtained how? If there is a consensus on the definition of the concept and how it can be measured. So psychology is definitely influenced by Descartes and later on by developments in the physics and has grown up 
by following what we call as hypothetical deductive model. The model suggests that scientific advancement can take place if you have a theory to explain that phenomena. Let us take an example in elaboration. Physicists have what called as a big bang theory to explain how the universe came into the form. Theory is nothing but or as when we say but it is a set of statements about how a certain complex phenomena can be explained with the help of a preposition which are interrelated. Now, based on that theory, psychologists or scientists deduce, I am right, you heard it right, deduce or propose it a hypothesis that offers a tentative answer or explanation of how a certain phenomena can take place. Now, what is hypothesis? Hypothesis is that tentative answer which is further being tested and proved either right or false or true or false taken or tested empirically with that empirical data that one has actually gathered. Now, this theory is revised. If data that is being gathered point in the different directions, then one is suggested by this hypothesis. Now, using the above approach, psychologists they definitely have developed theories of, you are right, learning, memory, attention, perceptions, motivations, emotions, etc. So many of them, multiple of them and have made significant progress in that. Till date, most of the researchers in psychology follows this approaches. Apart from this, psychologists have also been considerably influenced by the evolutionary approach which is dominating in the biological sciences. This approach has also been used to explain diverse kinds of psychological phenomena such as attachment and aggression to mention just a few. Now, let us take an example. You might have noticed that some people, they act so friendly, outgo, help others, appear to be, some are very, very shy, some are very withdrawn, some are too aggressive. So, if you have made these types of observations, then you are acting just like the early psychologists, dear children, who use behavior to draw some inferences about various kinds of personalities. By using these behaviors or measures and actually scales for treating them, it is possible to definitely measure thoughts and feelings also. This is similar to how other researchers explore invisible phenomena such as the way that the educators measures academic performance or the economics measuring the quality of life. Now, let us talk about something on psychology as a social science. So, we study human beings, yes, in their social cultural context. Human, they are definitely they creating their own environment and get affected by the socio cultural context. So, our relationship with the nature, our experiences, our mental processes, social and the physical environment, cultural environment, they all affects our behaviors and our thought process. So, we are what our environment is making us. So, psychology is dealing with human behavior and experience in the context of very important, you are right, society and culture. Let us understand what is mind and behavior. Do we have some relationship? Yes. Psychology began as a study of consciousness and it definitely turned to the study of observation or observable behavior. There is a difference. The behaviors what can be observed is called as an observable behavior. So, today it is a science of both behavior as well as the mental processes. That is what psychology definitely 
uh, lost once consciously, it is gaining again with that renewed vigor in the definitely in the name of the mental processes. Now, the intersection between the psychology and mind, brain behavior is concerned with how these mental capacities such as your memory, your perception, your mental imagery and language, they arise from brain function. Thus, studies in the cognitive science, they track involves studying mechanisms that ultimately produce cognition and behavior. Therefore, students and my dear scholars in these areas, they are definitely studying, people have been studying both the brain and behavior. The mind and the behavior, they operate together and are consciously tangled with each other. Recent studies in affective neuroscience have definitely cleared and clearly shown that more there is a relationship between mind and behavior. So, it has been shown that using positive visualization techniques, feeling of positive emotions, one can bring about significant changes in our bodily processes. As we discussed, Ornish, he has shown there is a number of studies with his patients. In these studies, a person with the blocked arteries was definitely made to visualize that the blood is flowing throughout his or her blocked arteries. And after practicing this over and over a time, they were established, made to visualize that there was a significant relief and the people were coming out of the blocked arteries and the pain and the blockage became significantly less. Now, use of mental imagery. Now, what is it? Mental imagery, these images, they are geared up with the person or they are generated by the person to have his or her mind has been used to cure the various kinds of phobias, irrational fears, objects and situations. A new psych discipline that is called as a psycho neuroimmunology, it has emerged which is emphasizing the role of these played by the mind and strengthening the immune system. Let us take an example. Have you watched a horror movie? Oops. What does the mind do? What does it produce? Very right. Fear, anxiety, thrill. What is the happening with the behavior? So, we definitely get behaviors which is biting our nails. What does the brain do? Gives us sweaty palms, increased heartbeat, cold fingertips, goosebumps, etc, etc. Now, let us talk about some popular notions about our discipline. Though, I mean through these experiences with everyday life, most of you, they, you have developed our own theory of human behavior. You must have come across your parents, mama, teachers, friends their own theory of psychology, everybody knows all. So, if we want some worker to perform better, what is a theory? In your past, so we know that, that we will need to push him, that is your theory, that is your mama's theory, that is everybody's theory. Such popular theories of human behavior is based on common sense may or may not be true, you agree? So, if this is being investigated scientifically, in fact, you will find that the common sensical explanations of human behavior, they are based on the hindsight and they explain very little. For example, if a friend of you, very near and dear friend of yours, which I mean whom you love a lot, he goes away, sad. He goes away to a very, very distant place. What happens? What will happen? What will happen to your attraction for this friend of yours? There are two sayings which you may definitely recall to answer this question. One of them is out of sight is out of mind. The second one would be distances make the heart grow fonder. Both of them make opposite statements. So, which one is true? Suppose 
you are able to find a new friend the saying is out of sight and out of mind will be used by you or the others to explain your behavior so if you are unable to find a new friend what is going to happen you will keep remembering your friend friend fondly you are keeping again and again remembering the name remembering the memories in this case the saying distances make the heart grow fonder will explain your behavior notice that in both the cases the explanation follows the occurrence of the behavior so now the common sense is based on your hindsight psychology as a science looks for patterns of behavior i'm right it's a patterns of behavior which can be predicted and not explain after the behavior is occurring scientific knowledge is generated by psychology that is often running against your common sense so there are many others common sense notions which you may now think not think to be true so you must be testing it and then when you turn out to be psychologist you'll try to verify it and you will establish it that it is not true based on the common sense not too long ago it was believed that some cultures that men are more intelligent than the women you must have also come across these kinds of comparisons women ca cause more accidents than men empirical data says that both or these are untrue common sense also tells us that one is not able to give one's best if you are asked to perform before in the large audience psychological studies have shown that if you have practiced well you may have actually performed better because with the presence of others it is helping you to perform it is hope that as you go on through the textbook you will discover that many of your beliefs and understandings of these human behavior will definitely going to change we'll also gather that psychologists are different from astrologers tantrics palm readers because why because systematically examining these propositions based on data to develop the principles about the human behavior and other psychological phenomena so my dear children in an end i would like to say it is a wonderful ocean keep on looking for more and more data and the another following modules we would be definitely talking more in detail about it how it has evolved and how it has come to the beautiful areas you can actually explore different terms and terminologies and i'm sure you are passionate about the subject and you will be passionate about the subject because it is a beautiful subject thank you so much dear children